Well, being introduced as an incredible speaker in the fake news context, uh, I would underline the incredible. Um, in terms of uh, this year's uh, statements, um, I was thinking with Paolo yesterday about this uh, kind of wording, a person of consequence. It used to be a man of consequence, but now we need to say a person of consequence, and uh, it's a good thing. Um, a person of consequence should be a person that is coherent. He does what he says. He stays where he stands. He is a person of consequence. But in a changing world, what is it, a person of consequence in a changing world? Uh, is coherent or is something different? Uh, what kind of coherence we need? What kind of approach we need to see the changing world in a way that is uh, positive? Uh, a person of consequence in the changing world. Uh, you know, this is a phrase that I use a lot, you know already, but you forgot it, so I remind you that shift happens. And uh, changing uh, can be uh, sort of good or sort of bad, uh, uh, and also could be just a new thing or could be a very important uh, new thing, something that changes the world. And innovation is not a new thing is something that has consequences. Thinking about consequences, you divide new things in two parts. One part is about new things that just are new, and that's it. And other things that are new and change the world. And there are intended consequences or Unintended consequences. We lived these 10 years, uh, you know, after, um, in the same time in which State of the Net was conceived. Uh, in the States, they invented uh, this stuff. And, and, uh, and it had consequences. Uh, it changed our body. It changed our life. It changed a lot of things. Um, and unintended consequences are something that we are talking about at the moment while uh, we uh, are talking about uh, fake news, data ownership, uh, transparency, and all of these stuff. Uh, there are many f uh, frontiers of shift, uh, and the F is always there. Uh, these new technologies open possibilities and close other possibilities. We live in eco-technical niches as anybody else uh, in the world, but we create our niches and we change them. So we adapt to the niches that we already have built in the past, and then we change them and create new, new niches in which we, we will adapt. But the changing is exactly what we need to understand. Uh, what is important in the changing uh, situation and what is uh, just new, what has consequences, what hasn't consequences, what has intended consequences, and what doesn't have intended consequences. This, uh, I would like to show you just three new things. Uh, this is really new. I mean, uh, they just uh, announced at the MIT that they created Norman. Norman is an AI uh, that uh, has been uh, developed in the dark web. And uh, Norman has only seen what happens in the dark web. And, they, and it, uh, it, it is able to tell what uh, it sees in images. So they show Norman images and 
Norman says what those images are about. Uh, and they showed him also the images of the Rorschach texts. And they waited for what he was seeing in those. For example, in this case, Norman, who has been trained, as I told you, in the dark web, in this image, he, it, uh, it sees a man that uh, uh, went down a building and uh, collapsed on the ground and is dead. Uh, and every other uh, image in the Rorschach test brings Norman to say this kind of uh, ugly, violent, terrible things. He is paranoid. Uh, it's a paranoid, uh, psychopathic, in, uh, artificial intelligence. Is this important or not that they created the, this kind of thing? Uh, it's clearly, uh, I don't care very much about this, but it tells you that uh, the intelligence, the artificial intelligence, is what the context in which it was trained makes it. So this, in a way, is important to understand consequences. What are we doing? You know there is a lot of debate about uh, are introducing artificial intelligence in the world. Some people say we are creating aliens that will dominate the human race. Some others are just talking about the fact that artificial intelligence will uh, make jobs disappear. Uh, and some others say it will make us a, 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 better, with, uh, more happy, with less bad things and uh, repetitive things to do and other uh, uh, things that just we are not able to do, like reading all the books or all the papers about our uh, disciplinary domain and using this kind of knowledge for acting in our uh, profession. So, Artificial intelligence has a lot of consequences, but we don't know them. We just are concerned about that in, in this moment, and uh, we uh, understand that uh, in artificial intelligence is what we train it to be. This other guy, you know it, it's uh, all the uh, frontier of new weapons. Uh, this is a robot. It was used uh, to kill one of those uh, terrorists that were killing the police in Texas, uh, and one of them was not uh, reachable by humans, so they sent this guy and uh, it was able to kill him. Uh, what are the consequences of weapons that just are robots? And uh, finally, this is another new thing that happened. This, uh, this, uh, uh, this animal is able to do the wall that is used in Kashmir and uh, produces 30% more, ca more Kashmir because it has been changed uh, in the DNA using CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology. It's, it's relatively new. It was invented in 2011. Uh, uh, now is the technology that attracts more investment in the States and in Boston in particular uh, for life sciences. It is able to uh, uh, gene edit any DNA. Uh, we, 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 we think that is very clearly usable in terms of uh, a development of new animals that can be useful for humans, but it is usable for changing humans too. What are the consequences of this? What will happen? Uh, the approach to understanding this is exactly the discussion that we have. And I ask Paolo to tell me when I have to stop, so the consequences will be uh, uh, not too bad for you. Uh, listening this speech. But the CRISPR-Cas9 is such a problem that the inventor of uh, 
the technology that is called uh, Jennifer Dudna, DNA in the name, Dudna. Uh, uh, Jennifer Dudna asked all her colleagues to come to Washington and discuss about a moratorium on using CRISPR-Cas9 on humans. They discussed for a week about the consequences of using CRISPR-Cas9 on humans. And after a week, they decided that they will use it on humans. And the idea was, if we don't do it, others will do it, so we do it. That kind of approach uh, to consequences uh, is, uh, is it's, it's general. It's something that we should know that it happens. There are people that just do things and then think about what the, are the consequences, and there are other people that think before doing things. And usually more of the first kind of people are in America, and more of the second kind of people are in Europe. Uh, the fact is that it's difficult to know about consequences. We don't believe anymore in forecasting. Uh, as the economist has said, economy is the science that studies why its uh, forecasting didn't happen. So it's, uh, it's, it's clear that we don't believe anymore in forecasting. Uh, but the whole bunch of things that we do is about a, a sort of idea that we have about the future. And the only thing that we know about the future is the, it, it is the consequence of what we do. Uh, so what happens, we just, we, we don't know the future, we just rely on narratives uh, that make sense of what happens in a way that creates a story and in that story we think we understand the consequences of what we do. That is a narrative, it's always a narrative. It can be the economy, uh, financial market uh, kind of narrative, it can be the techno-technical kind of narrative that says uh, resistance is futile, technology will come, exponential uh, uh, growth of ability of computers will change the world and humans will be overwhelmed by technology or other things like that. But they are always narratives. There is, uh, it's, uh, the, the real problem is discuss the narratives and make them uh, something that we know about, we improve constantly. Uh, there are also uh, a different approach in terms of analytical or uh, synthetic approach. I mean, if you go analytical on uh, consequences of what you do, you will find a, a, an incredible complexity of ramifications of consequences which will stop you at the center certain time. If you go just synthetic, I mean, uh, let's stop a ship coming with immigrants and we will solve the problem. That kind of uh, 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 narrative is uh, very synthetic uh, and also uh, this very much cri criti criticable. Uh, there are other narratives which are real narratives. This is uh, a story that was asked to this science fiction uh, novelist by the Institute for the Future in a project that they made uh, about understanding what happens with chips uh, in, in, implanted in the uh, brains. And uh, many uh, novelists came out with their ideas of what is the scenario that uh, it, it is created. Uh, uh, Nam came out with a story that talks about the fact that everybody with a chip is competitive, everybody else without the chip is not competitive, uh, so everybody needs a chip. Uh, and in that society, the, everybody needs a chip. Uh, some uh, are rich, and so they buy the chip, which is very expensive. Others are not rich, so they uh, accept chips uh, that are not expensive, but they bring 
advertising. So in their brains, when they go uh, around, uh, every bottle of water tells them, buy me because you need me, that kind of stuff. So these are narratives. And the intelligent thing to do is to discuss narratives. We have a story of big narratives in uh, the last uh, hundred years. One was the, the, the major narrative uh, that we knew until uh, the uh, 70s was the modern modernization, the modern narrative. And it was led by two big narratives that were Marxism and uh, liberalism. It was criticized by postmodern. They were like Lyotard and other philosophers telling us that the big narrative don't work. We need to experiment new narratives and uh, uh, sort of uh, like a situationist uh, uh, research to create a culture of movement, of experiment, of something that is a weak kind of narrative, but is a living narrative in, in the sense uh, that probably Paolo was t talking about before, but uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, a, with a problem. They didn't go anywhere. They just said, uh, told us about the end of the modernism. They were postmodern but there was, uh, there was no other uh, relationship with reality than a changing of, of approach to reality. Uh, what my uh, proposal is that we go towards, we go for a post-contemporary uh, approach. Post-contemporary approach is the idea of uh, the state of the net culture. It's exactly what happens here always looking ahead, always looking what's next, uh, always looking uh, what's ne the next big thing or the next good thing. Uh, imagining uh, to be always after the present. It's uh, really an anticipatory. It's not forecasting. It's just looking at facts with an anticipatory approach and uh, uh, a critical approach to see every new thing uh, in uh, asking uh, the facts if they are innovation, they will have consequences or not. Um, and uh, in this culture, we don't wait for consequences to arrive. Uh, we think the complexity like uh, people of, uh, uh, that are aware of the ecological approach that we need to understand consequences. Uh, so now, coming to the, the beginning, what is a person of consequence? Uh, it's not just coherent in the sense that she never changes. It's uh, a person of consequence is able to change because the context changes, but uh, has a purpose, as a strategy. Uh, she wants to be the author of her life. Uh, and that's really, uh, I'm, I, th I feel, the secret of uh, understanding how to live through the change in a way that helps us understand the consequences, not forecasting them, but understand what we really want to do in terms of uh, 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 finding ways that uh, open possibilities and have consequences that we like and want uh, for the rest of the world. Thank you.